Alright, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. But before we get there, we got to roll the intro. So, you want to handle that? Indeed. originally from West Palm Beach, Florida. Mixed Media is definitely a good uh, label on me because I dive in so many worlds. My name is Nathaniel Rios, uh, also known as Energy in the Dance World, but uh, in the artist world, I am Tunes Uno. So the name Tunes came from, I was in actually in French class back in like high school. There was a guy who actually wrote graffiti from the Bronx. He asked me what did I really enjoy as an aesthetic when it came to art. And it was just cartoons, so right then and there I was like, I'll go by Tunes. Ended up using Uno instead of One because me being Puerto Rican. Based on generations, uh, numbers are kind of separated in a name. So with me, I decided instead of going One like everybody was, I decided to go Spanish, Uno. And I added E at the end just to say, you know. I used to say you know all the time back in high school. So I was like, all right, tunes, you know, with an E, so it says you know. Art's kind of been in the bloodline uh, throughout my whole family. So many creatives in my family. My mom's uh, originally like a painter. She did a lot of oils and acrylics. So art's kind of always been in the house. I started just copying comic books. Marvel Comics, Steve Ditko. Uh, Todd McFarlane, I used to always just copy them. So I was always copying character design. And then once I got into graph world, learned about typography and lettering, and then the actual stylization of the characters. And then from there, I literally combined those worlds and I developed my own style as I got older. So I didn't get formally trained, so I moved up here in Orlando uh, about 2011. 2011, I moved up here in Orlando for Full Sail, and that was my first actual fundamental art class. I, I could draw still life and I would sit there and I would draw it. I would just be so bored because it's just something that we all see all the time. Compared to if I see something, flip it into a cartoon, you're kind of like tapping into your imagination and now you have like a dialogue compared to like, okay, yeah, I can see where that is and I can see that's, that's realistic and it's like that, in my opinion. That's what, what made me trigger to go to cartoons and more animated feel. But I still grab from the still life because without that, you won't have the ability to make something imaginative in a way because you still have to have a touch of reality. So as I create as an artist, like I, I'm literally going back to that five-year-old, 12-year-old kid and just sitting there, all the stuff that made me happy at that moment. Honestly, it's my way of staying young, not growing up, especially in this world, especially when you have adult life. I really would want to word it more and more, but it's just honestly just staying a kid. It's just my way of just keeping the innocence and just staying young, just staying that kid, just creating what I want to see. I consider illustrators storytellers, because illustrations in general is, is, is a story. If you're illustrating an idea or you're illustrating like a concept, now to make something more personal. So it's not just like, okay, this is cool on, on the surface level, like really, really personal, like people really understanding what's going on, and especially what's going on in today's science. A lot of social issues that should be talked about that a lot of people are kind of ignoring or just overlooking or not even noticing that's there. And then I think with my aesthetic too, being cartoons, it's really contrary. I really wanted to flip the switch so aesthetically, so I, I, when you have a cartoon, you really just think they're happy and going lucky and everything's nice. But then really tackling something strong, you really flip the switch on somebody. So it's like, whoa, that's what he's talking about? So as an artist, uh, I want to communicate. But I also want to communicate to others that they have a voice as well. So it's not just me speaking, it's actually, again, open dialogue for them that they have the opportunity to speak just as much as I am. As I'm maturing, I kind of realized that it, it's it's not as much about being cool or something being like, oh man, it's beautiful. It's more about like what's the conversation that happens when you look at it. When I really kind of realized that, I said, all right, I'm gonna start creating dialogue instead of just now making things that please myself, 
them actually wanting to make stuff that actually either it's deeply rooted in my past or my community compared to just me, myself, and I. In reality, for me, like the biggest thing is uh, inspiration and being able to have a flame ignited to do the same exact thing in my perspective and speak my reality. Yo, I'm being me to 100%. You should be doing, doing you for 100%. I don't care if it looks my way or your way. It's just the fact that you're bringing 100% to the table. And then if I can do that to someone else, like someone does me, then that's the end goal.